while, you know, in the States and around the world, you know, <clears throat> people are, you know, dealing, striving for, you know, financial stability in different ways and, you know, doing different by doing different things. One of the things that they apparently found is this interesting uh, study. So to Hollywood Unlocks with Jason Lee. New study uh, shows that 42% of couples keep financial secrets, raising questions about trust. So in today's financial landscape, concealing spending habits from a partner is more common than many think. In a revealing survey conducted by Bankrate, uh, so that's conducted survey, has revealed that 42% of couples have admitted they're keeping, and that's someone's admitted, uh, meaning to keep it financial secrets from their significant other, indicating this, that this trend is on the rise. The issue of financial dishonesty, often termed as financial infidelity, poses a severe threat to relationships with monetary disagreements being a leading cause of divorces. This is true. Despite the risk, some couples engage in this deceptive practice. According to Fox 26, uh, social media platforms are filled with humorous content showcasing individuals going at great lengths to hiding their spending, especially from online purchases. Uh, Mil Milka? Media? Humorously notes a typical scenario of individuals concealing Amazon packages to prevent their partner from discovering the extent of their expenditures. <laughs> oh my god, can you imagine? Nope. <laughs> uh, you see the you, you every day you see the Amazon um truck parked by your door, <laughs> but no new packages are coming in. <laughs> like nasty work, what, nasty. What's going on here? <laughs> but Obviously, this is something that's happening for a reason. So, I, even though it sounds, I'm kind of interested to know what y'all think of this. And uh, could y'all think about this? Because I am gonna, I do got some questions. Think about this. Do y'all uh, believe that there would ever be a reason to keep your financial information to yourself, or do you believe that you should typically always be transparent? Um, I'm and just gonna say real quick, I wish Wes was on the pod right now. To the West, and I would end up gonna say, um, while um, it's obviously in the in the con, this is obviously in the confines of um, couples. I think it's somewhat relevant to um, how financially transparent or not transparent you are when it comes to like you know, you know, partner or friends, parents, other people in your life that you might be tied to some degree financially. Uh, if that if that you know changes the perspective in, in any case, but uh, we'll start with you, Ghost. What do you think? Uh, I think there's plenty of good reasons, but if those good reasons outweigh the trust you have in your partner, and because of that you're not willing to share with them, then you shouldn't be marrying them. Well, let's start with that. What are the good reasons, quote unquote? I mean, just I guess if you if you were just living with somebody, not married, and just friends or whatever, and you knew that they had uh, irresponsible spending habits, they like to gamble a lot, or they like to splurge on foods and not responsible with their money. And you feel like if, let's say, I got this fake scenario I'm making up, let's say that you live with this person, you shared a bank account, and if you deposit your Sharing money- Sharing a bank account with somebody account, has a gambling problem is crazy. Yeah, which is, again, it's, it's a good reason why a lot of people don't have that trust because, again, like you said- Someone could gamble that money away in a split second, and that's that would be one of the reasons why you don't want to let them know. Another one is just like a rainy day fund. Um, if if you're with that, if you have that account with a person, and you think that other person saw that there's a ten thousand dollars in the account versus five thousand, they might be more inclined to be more reckless with their purchases. And with that in mind, you're like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to have to so deal you, with this. So, I'm so you got to sneak the money. So, so, so somebody uh, doesn't spend all the money in the account. Yeah, that's. I mean, again, I'm not saying 
I'm not necessarily advocating for these practices, but this that'd be one of the reasons why you might want to keep like a little side account or if you are getting flat because of all the packages that are coming in from Amazon and you're like, oh, you ordered something else, then you might want to not have to deal with any pushback. So you want to like the, hide the Amazon packages or do whatever. Oh, what? There's like a lot of small reasons. Some I would just not buy the Amazon packages. <laughs> That's the thing. You don't want to stop, which is why people want to hide their practices. That's but crazy. I mean, I'll, again, it really boils down to in in that fake scenario I painted. You're not married to the person, so you don't really have a, 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 re, a requirement to be open with them and to have a certain level of trust with them. So you go through these steps. But once you once you enter that stage of marriage, you have to be able to trust them. Marriage is marriage is when you you. Be completely honest about the financials. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that be dishonest about it until you get married. I'm just saying that there's a distinction, and if you are married, and I, I don't know when the stages where you combine accounts or you let the person know situation. So you do combine accounts at some point. I don't. Know, it's up to you. It, it's the the specifics don't really matter. It's just about the honesty. You don't have to have a shared account, but as long as they know more or less what the situation is, then that's what matters most. And if you can't, if you can't trust the person, that person can't trust you with that knowledge for whatever reasons, big or small, then that's a problem. You believe in trusting a person 100%? Uh, I I believe yes. I believe you should try to trust a person 100%. Try. What is this try? <laughs> Do you trust them or not? <laughs> 100%. I say try because you can you can start out trusting a person 100% and then they might do some things to betray that trust. Well, and... would you do something that is indicative of 100% trust? Um I'm not quite like, sure what Like would you in in your not pursuit, but in your trusting somebody one hundred percent, would you give up all the accounts? Would you give up your your pay statements? Would you give up your tax information? Would you give them access to every oh. any uh uh asset not asset but any access to access that you have? Well, I mean, I don't know if I'd be getting with the tax statements um, unless I'm marrying an IRS agent, but <laughs> what you in, in theory, yes. If they if they if they want to know something. They should know it like they should at the start if you're married to this person you shouldn't have any qualms about letting them know you got a secret nest egg stashed aside that oh you're in debt for this amount there shouldn't be again it should be 100 percent trust and that's not that's not really a feasible because there's going to be some things that for whatever reason you don't 100 percent trust your partner with and it could be something that you're or they're trying to gain your trust back because it's something they might have did to lose it or you're just trying to be more open but it should never be you go into a relationship having a specific set of secrets and then or marriage i should say and then uh, over time you unlock them i don't agree with i think it should be open all the way which is hard to do but if you're not willing to do that then you might want to hold off a of marriage until you are. So that's yeah, actually got you. Um, and one thing I was going to ask you, and none of these are, I'm trying to get you. If y'all ever think I am, trust me, I'm not. Well, maybe I am. But um, do you believe in, um, and I know the government tends to think it, but do you fully believe in like uh, what's mine is what's theirs? Or is there anything that you uh, believe in holding for yourself? Um, money wise, I'm assuming you mean, yeah, I do, I do agree that, or I do think that if what's mine is theirs, what's theirs is mine, it should, it should really be shared and it shouldn't be done in an exploitative way where, oh, because, uh, I, uh, I make more than you and you, or you don't make as much as me, then as a trade off, then 
I have to pay for it. I don't think it should really be like a transactional thing. It should just be, again, more about trust and the willingness mm. is there, even if the execution isn't always like you don't I'm not sure. Pay. I'm not sure if I get all that. You, what, what was the point you're getting into by what if if one person makes more than? Uh, I don't think it should be. A, I said I don't think it should be a transactional thing. So there's going to be some pay discrepancy in a relationship, but I don't think that should lead into a mindset of because one person makes more than the other and what's mine is yours, then they should have to buy everything for you until you hit the threshold or the difference that you guys make. And then you start buying stuff for yourself. I think, Oh, that, okay. I see yeah, what you're saying. I don't think it okay. should be like a mindset like that. It should be in theory, like if you wanted to, yeah, you could spend your, all your partner's money. Not that you should, but for, for whatever reason, emergency popped up and the option is there. Okay. All right. And I, okay. Yeah, that would make sense to me. Um, <laughs> I do kind of want to ask some of these questions about like when, but like some of these things, even I wouldn't try to, I would never try to prescribe people that they should like this specific, like at this point, this is when you give your, sitting by your credit card. At this point, this is when you give your tax information. So I won't, I, I try not to get into any of that. Um, what, how about you, Ace? What do you think of um, this, uh, startling maybe not starting what do you think about this uh, study and do you think there's ever a good or a legitimate valid or whatever you want to say reason to withhold uh information about financial uh endeavors or just finances in general um i think for the most part i agree with ghost in that like Outside of marriage, there's definitely valid reasons not to um, not to share like your full, you know, financial situation with somebody. And like the gambling example was very good, where if they were made aware and they have a gambling problem um, that it kind of puts them it, it kind of like, I don't want to say it, it puts them at a disadvantage, but it's like, you know, somebody has a, a lust or whatever, a temptation that they're going through. The ideal thing is to for them to be able to remove themselves from that situation so they don't have to. Um, so they so they don't have to, like, be constantly inundated with that, you know, with that lust. And over time, you know, hopefully they'll be able to um overcome it to the point where if they are in the presence of it they they're able to abstain from partaking so mm. so yeah with gam with like with a gambling addiction withholding that information from somebody i think can be considered to be a helpful thing in that in that case and i also Wait, i would withhold the gambling addiction no no withhold like withhold information about your oh finances. from somebody that has a, okay sorry yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So, um, but I think I would also extend that to marriage. Like somebody could, uh, people have a myriad number of issues and, um, you know, get into relationships. And I'm not going to necessarily say that, you know, if a person has a gambling addiction, that, that means they shouldn't get married. So if I, mm, if I can say that, then I would also, say that. I don't want to no. get into a conversation about gambling, but if you have Really, the better off of any addiction, you shouldn't be pursuing a relationship. But especially, well, no, no, I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say like if they ha if they struggle with that addiction, where it's, it's maybe something that they you know they had problems with in the past, and they're re they you know they've recovered from it. Okay, if they recovered still, or yeah, and or yeah, extensively yeah. working through it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, not just if um, you're in the midst of it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Um. So then, yeah. So if that person gets married, like, I think there could be a legitimate um, or I think the partner um, who doesn't have the addiction could legitimately, um, you know, withhold certain information about the finances and it not be a bad thing. But it would be in a it would have to be in a way where it's still like. Um, it's still understood that that's why they're doing it, and not just. Um, so you tell them I have an, 
So you're telling him I have an account that you can't touch for this reason? Yeah, pretty much. Like a very, a <laughs> yeah, very that conversation real, is gonna go real smooth. I mean, maybe, maybe not. If it doesn't go smooth, <laughs> if it doesn't go smooth, I I feel like this is something like you would want you would want to try to work out before the marriage. But well, and if it didn't go smooth, you would um, you probably wouldn't pursue the marriage. But that, that's so, that, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just to play devil's advocate. If I was in the position of the significant other here and you just told me, hey, there's an account that I don't want you to touch at all for whatever reason, Mm -hmm. I would be asking or I would think the significant other would ask, why not? Don't you trust me? No. I mean... (laughs) What? (laughs) Yo, that's the response? Can you guys chill out? Can you you guys chill out? (laughs) You said you said the answer. You had a very exclamatory You said you just you said said the answer. Now we gotta chill out. No. (laughs) No, I'm saying no because you guys are making this sound crazy. The person knows they have a gambling addiction. So like this is something that they would have explained to their partner. Oh, sorry. So you're saying it specifically in content in relation to the gambling issue. Yes. If there was a specific okay, I I'm thinking you just okay, okay. I don't know if I'm letting you get by that quick. <laughs> like we're talking about humans at the end of the day. You're not like it's not just gonna be like that smooth. A person is you know, has their struggles or the things that they deal with, but they're also one hundred conscious enough to know that like their partner is going to uh reserve themselves in some ways. People are this absolutely like go the situation that goes uh, just talked about is not unfathomable where someone could have their issues, but once you present a, a, a scenario of something you're doing to um keep yourself safe from that person, they're going to respond with, So you don't trust me. So why are you with me? No, but the way I'm proposing it is not in a way of you you're um you're telling you're telling them something that you're doing is something that you're establishing for the relationship going into it so like that person just told me i have this gambling addiction i'm working th- i mean uh, you know i've i've worked through it it's still something you know i kind of struggle with but I, i'm trying to work through it so it's not something that I, I struggle with anymore and i think it would be wise to i mean not necessarily not necessarily it's not necessarily like this is the only solution that you would okay this is the solution since you had a gambling addiction we're gonna have i'm gonna have a separate breaking count but it may be something to consider so that's what i'm saying it's it's like are there valid situations where having some type of um having a partner having a lack of knowledge about the full financial situation is could be an okay thing i think it could and this is a situation where it could potentially work but i mean you are right you're you're 100 percent right there's maybe the majority of people wouldn't agree with it but i think if if it could be where the two people were on the same page about it and like you know i have this addiction that i've struggled with in the past it's something that i'm trying i'm still trying to go through but it does kind of make sense that and you know in order for me to just not even put myself in the situation where i'm gonna struggle with that you know that temptation again we just okay i know there's an account i know you know it's you know being used for whatever either if it's a savings account or um it's something that we you know use for the mortgage or whatever i don't i don't touch that account i don't look at the account it's my partner's handling that account I, i i don't think that's necessarily out of the realm of feasibility and i think it could be a good thing but and there would still be a trust there where it's like the the person with the addiction would have i mean or or, you know recovering from the addiction um there would still be a level of trust for their partner and um it would it would be it would be like a fully open line of communication even though all of the information isn't there it's like still something they both established together so I think mm. in that way it could still be a a um a solid like a, a solid you know a marriage or whatever it's, it's, it could still work like yeah yeah no to be clear I I do very much um agree with the sentiment like you know none of these things are going to be like a walk in the park conversation like you know like a lot of things in life there's a level of compa- complexity and you're like depending on the people you have to kind of like be able to sit down and rationalize things and just have a, a open but honest conversation which 
is not always easy, even evident by our podcast, but like it, it can lead to like a productive relationship. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, I know a lot of this for a lot for some of the conversations we're kind of leaning on this example of somebody with addiction, and I don't really want to get into that, but like that's that's all I want to get into it. That's just an interesting example that we keep leaning on. Um, I guess in the opposite, vice versa, whatever. Kind of on the flip side, would you even though it's also kind of strange talking to men about? It, I'm sure if you're talking to women about, it, you would get kind of a different response. But would you be pushing or vying? for it to get your partner's financial information mm. uh reverse it back on you yes i think so. yes 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 definitely um i would want to know i would want to know how how frugal this person is like oh here we like, go damn oh <laughs> so you are for real oh, okay <laughs> hmm. yeah, okay yeah, Scope Interesting. The situation now <laughs> yeah huh. yeah this would be part of the this would be part of the research that's part of your vetting process yeah 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 Yeah, that's what i like that see that's look that's what one day we're gonna have a conversation yeah. about what i know we weren't gonna talk about stages in that but what stage in the relationship would you be uh looking for this information um hmm i mean yeah no, i'm assuming question. it's i'm assuming it's going to be generally like whenever you decide that you're relatively serious or want to yeah per- want yeah. to proceed on being serious yeah yeah i think so i think so i think at the moment where you where you say like you know you you want to be exclusive and you you're you know at least looking toward marriage um yeah i think that's when you start having those conversations yeah Mm -hmm. and again even that's like a you it's like it's hard to put like a exact time frame like months or years or whatever on that but i think generally when you're whenever you're designed to get serious like you said um what was i gonna say okay so yeah you would and then what about you ghost uh could you see yourself like at, at some point in time like pushing to know exactly all their information um like let me see your bank statements let me see your pay stubs let me see your debt to root to yeah, income ratio IRS, but i don't i was gonna say no aces dance kind of makes sense like so you could just know responsible money i don't think i would really push for it i would try to essentially i want to know that they're willing to do so to share the information willing potentially to set up a joint account but that doesn't mean that like i actively need to see it it's just a, it's kind of just like is the willingness and the intent there more so than my personal like so i want to see how x amount of money in your bank so are you basically saying you don't credit score so you basically you definitely need to know the credit score. So you are basically saying, or, or I'm asking you, um, you don't need to, you don't need to necessarily know all the information, but you, you want the access to it. Uh, yeah, kind of. Again, it's just it's really about the trust thing. Do you trust me with the information? And that that's what's really important. It's it's just like a for the um, I can't remember the phrase like for the thought of it for the it's the uh. Or like the principal like, or something like that? Yeah, the principal, the principal. Man, people be saying it's the principal of it and be having no principles. But that's also <laughs> not applicable to us. Um Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, everything y'all are saying basically makes sense. Um it is interesting. Um this the, the latter part of this uh post. The bank rate survey shed light on various forms of financial secrecy, including undisclosure spend undisclosed spending, hidden debts, which I think could probably be the biggest one. A lot of people be having debt. A lot of it's typically accrued through um stool school and our uh, also credit card debt. Um and covert accounts or credit cards ted rossman of bank rate highlights the that secret spending tops the list of financial deceptions oh i guess uh, the biggest thing is actual secret spending a worrying trend in identified by survey is the increasing prevalence of financial secrecy among younger generations particularly gen z and millennials who reportedly deal with the burdens of debt 
So it seems like people in our generation, or even if not younger, are the ones that are really on this, like, I, I gotta hide my shit. And this thing, essentially, that's the spending. You know, and, you know, I, I you know, have somewhat, not frequent, I don't want to make sure we're all talking about it, but I have, um, I, I've had, had conversations, um, Sorry, I'm like I have conversations um, about us finances with my significant other, and it's interesting. It's like what I some of the conclusions I really came to is like, and like you guys said the same thing to me. Like, you should just really there's really not a lot of reason to not know some things. That's why some of these things are kind of confused to me. Not to get into my whole perspective on it, but it's like, why are you in a scenario? And maybe y'all can. Maybe I'll say something different, but like you don't know what and when your partner is spending generally, and we we'll know what they're bringing in. They basically know what they're bringing in and what they're putting out. Like, like it really doesn't really make too much sense to me to why you wouldn't know that. Um, I mean, I I think it it's not necessarily a mystery to me. Like, if two people come together. That you know, they they both had their own bank accounts. They both, um, you know, they both have a job or whatever. Then, even if they do a joint thing, like maybe they still have, they still have other accounts or whatever that aren't that this, where the information isn't shared. So, I, I don't think it, necess- it would necessarily be hard for somebody to, um to do something secretly that the, the other person person doesn't know about. I mean, at the, po- that. At, at the point where you're like agreeing to be in like a unit, I mean, it's just like, that is like, and maybe it's cause, you know, we think of like as relationships and sex currently marriage as like, you're becoming one, but like, and there's always, there's even a, I think this thing's referenced in the scriptures, but in a different context, but like, could you imagine a situation when your right hand is doing one thing and your left hand is doing another thing and you, you don't know? It's like that's what I kind of like I'm equating it to. It's like, but I think, you... yeah, but... I hear you. I, I think it's it's almost easier <laughs> not to, but it. I feel I feel like it requires a level of planning slash like a discuss a, a, an intentional discussion about. This is what we're going to do in terms of the finances this and in terms of our different accounts that we have open you know even if we do a joint account what 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 are we doing with all the well, rest of these accounts are I, we putting I, each I, other on them or like i all think that the crazy. overall conversation of like hey how are we going to work our finances that's a big conversation that requires you know a good sit down and like yeah. going through certain things i'm just talking about like because again they're mentioning like one of the big deals is like uh secret spending and it's like I don't even understand how you get to see your spending. If I'm gonna buy something, you'll probably know, especially if it's like of, of a certain amount. But literally, how? Like, you would have to for the other person to know, they would have to use an account that both of you have, right? No, I'm talking about just telling them. I'm gonna go buy. I'm gonna go buy this thing at Walmart. I'm, you want anything? Hmm. Well, yeah. Hey, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hey, you, hey, I'm gonna go. Hey, I'm, I am. Like they, like they mentioned, I'm gonna go. Or like we've been mentioning. Hey, I'm gonna go make an Amazon purchase. You, you want anything? Yeah, want you gonna want anything in the cart? Like these comments, these are really aren't that really hard to really have these conversations. No, I, I mean, but the point is that people like people are doing it because they don't want the other person to know. Like they don't want the other person to know how much they're spending on stuff that the uh, the partner may say. We gotta like don't buy that because <laughs> it's it's either we don't need it or we don't have the the money to do it. Like it's, well, it's I mean, something if, that people are doing intentionally for a bad reason. I get that. If if the but if the reason is like we don't have the money, then we don't have the money. <laughs> like like we, well, the we. I mean, we're to uh, well, we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about two like two different people who. Unless they are super on the same page, like they got the same brain, they're gonna have different. Um, or y- there's gonna be some level of difference in terms of um, what each one maybe considers like financial stability or maybe it's how much such they a, need. 
Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, right. You, how much you could need to stay, in. and maybe yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. way different in the contour- in the confinements of a relationship. But let's say we all put our money together and we have one account. It's for whatever reason. Like understanding that, wouldn't it just make all the sense in the world? For well, first of all, we know what we're bringing in. So when something's going out, wouldn't it make sense for everyone to have a general consensus on like what's acceptable or not? It does make sense for the um for the benefit of the whole, but for the individual who is trying to satiate a craving that they have, they're not thinking about the benefit of the whole per se or their so, their, so it goes back to prob- their mind or consi- yeah so go back to problems like it's individual thinking opposed to unit thinking uh 100 yeah okay so i mean that's one of the bigger more stories then like any like there, there does come to a point in time where when you're working with others or being in a relationship with them you have to think of a unit again yeah I, yeah i think i think that's think of- you have to really just imagine it as like you're just one or multiple members of one body. You, the body has to agree. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, but I think it is again, like it's, it's easy to say, but when you consider that like half of marriages end up in divorce, because of finances, it's obviously oh, no, hard because of finances, to, but because of finances, yeah, yeah, it yeah. It, it's obviously um harder to put into action especially when you consider that it's supposed to be over the course of your whole life and regardless of i mean yeah regardless of anything like people are two people when they start out in marriage compared to the people that they are either when they divorce or at the end of their marriage whatever they are there is a journey like a growth that happens they're not the same person that you that you married so um there is going to be differences in opinion and all these things that have to be worked out. And it's very easy not to work through those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. And I mean, I guess like one of the biggest things is make sure you, uh, I mean, kind of made a comment about it. Make sure you do your due diligence in the vetting to make sure you find somebody that's as frugal as you and or spending that spends as lavishly as you. I guess it's one of the biggest things. Yeah, just be like transparent. Like your your unit. Like I don't know, it's really not that big of a deal to me. But anyway, um, if there's nothing else, we can move on to the next topic.